Hallo zusammen. Yes, I know. Long time no see, dear Analyzing German Song series. I know. I've already interpreted and talked about the lyrics of songs by Rammstein and the Ärzte, but this time it's getting a bit, well, more poppy, dare I say. And in this particular case, that isn't meant in a bad way. Quite the opposite. Because today I'm gonna talk about the song 99 Luftballons by Nena, which probably still to this day is one of the most popular German songs known internationally. Since I'm not allowed to directly use and feature the actual song in this video, yeah I know, sad but true, I really suggest listening to the song while watching the video. This is how I would do it. If you have two screens, put this video on one screen and the music video on the other screen. That way you can easily listen to the song and jump to the respective parts I'm talking about while watching this video on the other screen. The lyrics will be shown on screen in total and the things I'm talking about in specific will be highlighted as well. And of course, I've also translated the lyrics to English and those will be shown next to the German lyrics as well. By the way, yes, I know there are English lyrics to this song already, but I still wanted to translate them myself and the way I'd translate them quite well. Literally, but also rather freely. A mixture of both, pretty much. <laughs> 99 Luftballons, 99 Balloons is a song by the German singer and eponymously called band Nena. It was first released in 1983, both as a single and on the band's eponymous album. It was composed by the quite famous German songwriter Uwe Fahrenkrug Petersen and the lyrics were written by Carlo Karges. This song in particular is still considered one of the most popular songs of the Neue Deutsche Welle genre, which pretty much was a highly popular wave of new wave music and a more punk rockish type of pop music in Germany during the late 70s and the 1980s. The whole first verse is a more or less independent introduction to the story that's about to be told and unfold throughout the song. Each verse is a continuation of the previous one with additional and more detailed details. Makes sense. At only 4 seconds in, Nina directly asks the listener if they have some spare time in order to listen to the song, so instead of talking to a specific, maybe even fictitious person, she's rather breaking the fourth wall right from the get-go, so to speak. She is addressing you. Hast du etwas Zeit für mich? Dann singe ich ein Lied für dich von 99 Luftballons auf ihrem Weg zum Horizont. And no, I'm not gonna sing that. <laughs> Sorry. At this very early point in the track, you might even expect a very romantic song about peace and white sunny sky and cute rubber ducks and uh, stuff. But no. The song actually takes an interesting turn during the second verse in general and from the second half onwards in particular. In a way, the very first line in the second verse actually marks the indirect beginning of the song, since Nena, or rather the lyrical I, das lyrische Ich, has offered to sing a song about 99 balloons in the first verse. That's probably also the reason why this verse starts with the basic situation that has already been mentioned and teased in the first one. The third and following line actually sets the more military and darker lyrical tone for the remainder of the song. 99 Luftballons auf ihrem Weg zum Horizont hielt man für UFOs aus dem All. Darum schickte ein General eine Fliegerstaffel hinterher. Yep, that escalated quickly. As a side note, I really like the change of pace and tempo at the beginning of this verse, which underlines the growing intensity of the lyrics very well, so it really accompanies that quite directly. Generally speaking, on both the lyrical and musical side of things, this song heavily breathes the zeitgeist of the 1980s, which, by the way, is a German loanword. It's der Zeitgeist, the time ghost so to speak. At this point in time, the Cold War, der Kalte Krieg, was still happening, it was still going on, and no one really knew what was gonna happen next. So many people were afraid about the ongoing Cold War turning into a hot war all of a sudden. And to be even more specific, because Nina is German and Germany was separated back then, that was also a huge part of the tension that was going on and the uncertainty, so to speak. 
So yeah, in the microcosm it's West Germany and East Germany, but in the macrocosm it's pretty much the West against the East. The third verse is more direct regarding the almost paranoid reactions that were solely caused by 99 balloons flying in the sky. This is conveyed through an already different beginning. 99 Düsenflieger, jeder war ein großer Krieger, hielten sich für Captain Kirk, es gab ein großes Feuerwerk. The fearful and uncertain almost paranoid reaction by the neighbors, most likely again referring to the conflict between the West and East Europe back in those days, is highlighted especially in the second half of the verse. Die Nachbarn haben nichts gerafft und fühlten sich gleich angemacht. Dabei schoss man am Horizont auf 99 Luftballons. People on one side of the Iron Curtain, der eiserne Vorhang, did something pretty harmless, but the neighbors, meaning people on the other side of the curtain, were alarmed and presumed the worst scenario. To me, this also raises the question whether the alarmed side, the neighbors, actually felt threatened out of, like, real fear, meaning because they really misconceived the situation, pretty much by accident, or if they were even glad about the situation, because they could use it to their advantage willingly and as an excuse for being allowed to attack the enemy. And of course, don't get me wrong here, there is a huge difference between the people I'm talking about, like the citizens and the regimes. So I primarily refer to the army, the military and the politicians. The lyrical eye is very clear and direct on this matter. The enemy is so cruel and just waits for even the tiniest and most stupid situation to feel threatened and to start a war. The hot war, so to speak. The fourth verse expresses a similar intense situation, but on a different level of governance, so to speak. This time the lyrics directly refer to politicians on the enemy's side, the war ministers, die Kriegsminister. 99 Kriegsminister, Streichholz und Benzinkanister hielten sich für schlaue Leute, witterten schon fette Beute. And apparently this situation really escalates in the second half of this verse, because it goes, the war ministers riefen Krieg und wollten Macht. Mann, wer hätte das gedacht, dass es einmal so weit kommt wegen 99 Luftballons. The fifth and last verse talks about a time period in the future. So there's quite a huge jump in time now. It's pretty much the next hypothetical page in the same book. Or for instance a picture of a dystopian scenario of how the world could have ended if everything really escalated and the Cold War indeed would have turned into a very hot war. Which as we know now, nowadays in 2018, didn't happen. But back then, people didn't know that yet. So, again, keep that in mind. 99 Jahre Krieg ließen keinen Platz für Sieger. Kriegsminister gibt's nicht mehr und auch keine Düsenflieger. Heute zieh ich meine Runden, seh die Welt in Trümmern liegen, hab einen Luftballon gefunden, denk an dich und lass ihn fliegen. Now that I once again think about the balloons and the metaphor behind those, that could also refer to many people trying to flee and pretty much leave the GDR, the Deutsche Demokratische Republik. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but trying that, many people actually lost their lives and they died. But I assume the balloon the lyrical eye has just found might also be a metaphor for a remaining very bleak or pale shimmer of hope. Der Hoffnungsschimmer, a very similar word as you can see, even in dark and or the darkest times. There is always hope in the world and people shouldn't lose hope, so to speak. And the memory of a loved one or a very close person will survive in the end. That's how I'd interpret the last line. Because that is what it's all about and what is magical about art, because even if the lyricist had a specific intention in mind, you as the listener can still have your very own perception and interpretation of the song and each song can have a specific meaning to you. And although I don't really know about that, 
I could imagine and pretty much assume that this song might be perceived and mean something different to people in East Germany. Once again, I don't really know if you know that or if you're aware of that, but back in the day, people couldn't just leave the GDR. If I had to put it in really literal, direct words in comparison, they weren't free. So that is what I think 99 Luftballons by Nena is about. I also enjoy the rather obvious contrast between the rather happy pop melodies and the increasingly intense and darker lyrical content. Because even if you don't understand German and you don't really know much about the background of all this, the song will still work as a pop song because of this Harvey Two-Face character to it, you know? And as I've already mentioned at the beginning of this review, even though this contrast is quite evident, the pace and rhythm of the song still correlates quite closely with the story. For instance, the very last verse is rather quiet and mellow sounding compared to the rest of the song. If you have specific suggestions for other songs I could analyze or talk about, let me know in the comments. Thanks for your support and for sharing my videos, because that really helps a lot. Dankeschön for watching, so to speak. I'm your vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.